Thank you. Starting recording. So this is the November 5th, 2019. This is the Chaos Monthly Call at the moment. So we're gonna give some updates as to what's going on with the project. Um, kind of working through the uh, notes, that document that I shared in the chat. I guess the first thing that I'll, I'll just, there was, these are in no particular order. Um, so the first thing is the, the chaos community reports. And so the chaos community reports, again, are reports that we're going to do with two different projects, Zephyr and Jenkins X. And the idea here is that we're going to provide these reports for these communities. There are some details that need to be worked out, like which of the chaos metrics the communities would like. And I also think maybe the time frame that we would look across these metrics on, you know, kind of how we represent that. Um, I did send an email as I was looking through the action items for today, introducing uh, Sean and Georg, who have decided to be, or thank you for, for um, being the point of contact from Chaos, with Kate and Kara. So Kate being from Zephyr and Kara being from Jenkins X. So um, hopefully the introduction, we can, we can kind of work through what the details are on the reports, either via email or in a separate meeting. Um, but I, something tells me this shouldn't be a ton of work. Um, and I think once we start getting the reports built out, I'll reach out to folks at the Linux Foundation to make them look nice. Um, my hope is to have these reports, again, these one page PDF reports released in conjunction with um, OSS, or I'm sorry, ChaosCon Europe in 2020. So does anybody have comments on that? Georg or Sean? My thinking is that now that we have the introduction, we'll get in touch with the project leaders, figure out what uh, data sources we track, figure out or just make sure they're on the same page with the scope of the project. Yep. And then once we had that meeting and that consensus, then we can start collecting the chaos metrics. Great. Which we are looking at the ones that are released and the ones we are planning to release. And yeah. that's the limited scope we defined. Yep. And I think it sounds like that it's possible of those that are released or to be released that um, Zephyr might lean towards a particular set of those metrics and Jenkins X might lean towards a different particular set of those metrics, which is totally fine. That would surprise me. They serve two fundamentally different kinds of purposes. Yep, exactly. Problem, yeah. Yep. Um, so I think the takeaway is that it's not, not cr critical that everything is, <laughs> is in that report, but it, as Georg had pointed out, it's scoped to the chaos metrics. Um, obviously the one, some of the DNI metrics will be a little bit more challenging, I think, um, particularly around things like events, you know, like event diversity. I just don't know if Jenkins X or, um, Zephyr is going to have events or has any of the data prior, but that's okay. That, that would be an example of things that maybe don't make this report. And just as a side note, if there is a particular metric one of these projects wants to have that we are not planning right now, we can certainly use this as motivation to include it in the next release. Good call. Move it out and include it. Yep. Great way to source them. Um, excellent. Thank you. Any other comments on that? Like everything, moving, moving forward slowly but surely. Um, ChaosCon, so there's the link to ChaosCon. We do have our keynote, so it's Deb Nicholson from the Software Freedom Conservancy, which is great. Um, does anybody have thoughts about a second keynote? We have done two in the past, and we've also done one in the past, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we've uh, we may have talked about this before. We've always had like one of the like a uh, governing board members talk about like the state of chaos community or chaos project. So it could be a good. Yeah, I think that's a good. Like maybe maybe 
somebody on the board can just put that in as a a talk proposal. Yep. Does anybody, I mean, I can do it. I'm going to be there and I'm happy to do it. I haven't spoken at a chaos. Well, no, I was at spoke at the last one, but anyway, I can do it too. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, are, you, are you going, Ray? Yeah, I'll be there. So, okay, cool. Yeah. Georg, are you going to be there? I will be there. Yes. Sweet. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think that would be good. But I think like last year, we, I mean, for the last two Chaos Cons, we also had like an afternoon keynote speaker, like right oh. after lunch. But uh, maybe we're okay with one. At the yeah, point. no, I think that's, we don't necessarily need it. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Okay, thank you, sponsors. So again, continued thank you to GitLab and Seco Assist and Petergia. The really nice thing about the sponsorship as well is that we're going to be able to provide lunch on site, which I'm yeah I'm really happy about because that keeps everybody there. And um, anyway, it's just it's a nice thing. So pretty happy about that. Should we be doing? Um, so we should probably be thinking about some signage. Um, does GitLab, I'm trying to think, I mean, do you have anything that you bring, Ray? I know Batergia sometimes brings a banner. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably, I might bring like one of those pop-up stands. I mean, I don't need to, like I'll, I'll have it with me anyways for okay. Bosnam, but uh, yeah. But I mean, it's not like necessary, like, okay. um, I mean, if, if you, if there's space for it, it, it's a little cramped in there, but great. If not, I mean, I think we can just create a poster, I guess, with all the okay. sponsor logos, but. Okay. I think Don had mentioned in one of the previous calls that yeah. uh, signage will probably need to be coordinated with the hotel. Yeah. Because okay. uh, the hotels usually kind of frown on that. Mm. I think if we have a pop-up stand, then it's or a roll up or whatever they're called that's not going to interfere with signage that we post throughout the hotel I i'm think totally okay with it maybe yeah, we can. i mean we can just have them in the room right and yeah. then they're not gonna i i think they'll have an issue if they have them in the hallways but okay uh, or lobby but. well why don't you just kind of plan on bringing that way okay um call for talks so a call for proposals, call for proposed talks. The deadline is the 30th of November. So honestly, if you're going and you have insights as to what community health means to your organization or to your projects, it would be great if you could submit. I know that we have a lot of the usual suspects, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, if we're the ones that are talking about this stuff, you know, like for example, Sean, like if you're doing work with Augur, it would be silly to not talk about Augur it, to me. It can't. Yeah, of course, it's silly for me to not talk about Augur. It's all I know. My family's talking yeah. about Augur. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, or, or Ray coming from GitLab, if these are issues that you're, you know, working through at GitLab, just tell us what's going on. So I think this is a great core group of people, and um, I'd love to hear what's going on inside of different organizations and different projects. As far as the, uh, the yeah. CFPs go, yeah. we're actually, we're missing a lot of the usual suspects right now. Okay. Like uh, Red Hat usually presents, uh, I don't think there's any Baturgia yet. Uh, VMware is one that we usually see. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're, at this point, we're really not seeing CFPs from any of the usual suspects. Okay. Uh, well, I got a deadline it. of November 30th, and people tend to put it off. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. We get like 20 in the last four days. That would be great. Um, I know that I'll be submitting something. Yeah, I know. I'll be submitting a couple of things. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, so please submit. And honestly, if you know folks, I think we're talking about ways to kind of start reaching out to people directly to encourage them to submit. So perhaps if they've attended chaos cons in the past, or we know that this is an area of interest to them, but they haven't submitted prior. Um, 
if we could all just kind of do our part and encourage folks directly to participate, that would be great. If you know somebody who's kind of working around this issue. So um, there is a planning document. I don't know that we should spend a whole lot of time on that. Does anybody I think I would could? actually skip it today. Yeah. So on the weekly calls, at the end of the weekly call, the planning committee gets together to go through the document and see if there are any action items that we need to be moving forward. But for the monthly call, I propose we skip this part. Yeah. So if you're if you really want, if you really desire to know what's going on, click that link. <laughs> you can get some insight as to what's going on. Um, any other comments on ChaosCon? Um, Foz, we've talked about FOSDEM in the past at this moment. Do we have any chaos-related FOSDEM things? Matt, did you submit to the main track? I did. Excellent. That's the only one I'm aware of right now. OK. OK. What about the table? I have not heard back from them yet. and. I don't know when the deadline was when I was supposed to hear back. You, you're supposed to hear back on the 11th. But. So, okay. Georg, did you submit it for both Saturday and Sunday or just one of the days? Ooh, uh, good question. I think only one day. Okay. Yeah, I noticed. I mean, I, I really liked it. That's actually one of the feedback I provided last year. Just having committing to sand for two days is just way too much for so GitLab, I just submitted it for Saturday. Just because just yeah. it's a lot to stand behind. No, it's just, yeah. I mean, even if you like, I mean, because there's just so many people, right? And then even if you just do it for a few hours a day, it just really wears you out. So. Yeah. All right, cool. I don't remember, Rob. Yeah. Should well, I, get... I, guess, I guess we'll find out when we hear back on the 11th. <laughs> Should I get more stickers, Georg? So what? Should I get more stickers? Uh, yes, please. I also got a new supply somewhere. What? But... Yeah, sp speaking of stickers, like we had like 3,000 last year. We just ran out like, like <laughs> All it's, right. it's not even funny. Um, okay. Well, I'm probably not going to order 3,000. That sounds like a suitcase worth. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. All right, well, I'll order high on the volume, particularly if we get the yeah. table. If we get the table accepted, then right, I'll, right, I'll yeah. So, okay, uh, great, thank you. Um, I do want to just say on the DNI badging program. I know that I had brought this up before, and I do just want to mention this. So, one of the things that I'm constantly doing is trying to think about ways that we can take the metrics and get them into practice, right? So that we're not just developing metrics for metrics' sake. And some particular metrics are kind of amenable to end up in things like Augur and Grimoire Lab, but other metrics considerably less so. And so one of the things that I'm working on is a DNI badging program. So if people have an interest in this, please reach out to me. And at least the first thought is um, ways that events could badge themselves using the chaos DNI metrics. So I think at the moment in the first release, we had three metrics, is that right? Family friendliness, diversity access tickets, and event code of conduct. So the, in terms of kind of moving this badging forward program, we're proposing two more metrics around event diversity, which is speaker demographics and attendee demographics. So the badging program that I actually have five metrics that, that events could badge themselves off of. For example, do you provide diversity access tickets? Are you, you know, what is your evidence for being family friendly? Do you have a, a code of conduct for your event? Do you report speaker demographics? Do you report attendee demographics? Just really these kind of things. So um, kind of, it's just more of a, a statement for folks here. Um, I think this is a really cool idea personally. <laughs> and I've gotten yeah. some positive, positive feedback on it. Um, and so the idea would be to actually run this in a very transparent and open way. So I don't know if anybody has <coughs> comments on this or has an interest in participating or just. I mean, you and I have talked about it, so. Yep. 
I'd like to. Yeah, fine. I mean, I've talked about it in, in other weeks here too. So if you do have an interest, that would be great. Um, and I don't know kind of what the time frame is on this. I think we have to kind of build a prototype workflow system by which this would occur. And that would be something that I could bring forward to folks. And then I would think we also have to consider how we consider the metrics. So for example, if you're at an event and you're looking to get an event badge, um, how do we consider things like attendee demographics? You know, like what, what's the evidence we need for that or speaker demographics or, you know, I think we probably, as opposed to just having everybody kind of use their own judgment, you know, what are the, what's our evidence essentially? So those things have to be worked out. Um, so I think at some point this will probably come to the, the most likely working group uh, being DNI. So um, we haven't really had an in-depth conversation there about this. All right, so that's that. Any questions on that? Uh, all right, we're just moving right along. This is this is how things go when we have a good group of folks. So the communication committee, I was not at that meeting, so I actually don't know. This is like one thing I'm I don't actually know what's going on. So can, does anybody have an update on this? Uh, I can share a document that uh, that we created. Uh, just okay. a second, let me find it. Okay. Uh, I will say, uh, generally speaking, the, uh, the outcome of the meeting was that we created a, a content group uh, within, uh, within our, our GitHub uh, uh, Governance repository. So okay. we kind of decided to work out of out of that repository. Okay. Have you made that? Like, do you have a folder in there or something? I'm sorry. Do you have a folder in that, or are you just? Uh, no, no, not not at this time. Okay. Are you sharing the document? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying okay. to find it. Okay. I had it. Uh, I had it out. I did not uh, save it. Okay. Well, when you get it, I think the general idea of this committee, just so folks know, is to uh, not standardize isn't quite the right word, but um, create a consistent way of talking about the chaos project across a variety of different communication channels. Is that about right, Kevin? Uh, yes, yeah, just to, not to not to manage communication, but to help coordinate shared communication platforms and provide some form of standardization for uh, the dissemination of, of information. Okay. So. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, and so I, you know, I know that it's early, so I'll be interested to see what kind of what comes yeah. out of this group. And I did share the document, by the way. Yep, I got it in the minutes. All right. Um, all right. Again, just moving right along. Um, on the the linking of software and metrics, this is something that I've brought up a few times. And the idea here is that we have obviously several tools, including Augur and Grimoire Lab, that are part of Chaos, and then we have the metrics that are also part of part of Chaos, right? And so the idea is just making sure that that um, we kind of recognize the work of each other. And so, Sean, I had, um, I'm looking at you. So I was wondering if there was an easier way to do this. So I had taken a look at this, this API doc thing that you shared. Yep. And um, if you load it up, a number of the chaos references are either ending up as a, they're going, they're linking out to metrics that aren't fully developed. Yep, that's because the metrics aren't fully developed. <laughs> <laughs> stunning, stunning leads. <laughs> I mean, there's actually there's there's uh, nine metrics that are going to get pull requested into evolution probably okay. in the morning. That so we're we've sort of inventoried over the weekend the ones that aren't developed that we have links to that are priority to develop. So okay, those nine are in development on a fork that we have, and I 
I plan to pull request those tomorrow morning sometime. So okay. that, uh, they can be reviewed at the evolution meeting on Thursday. Okay. Yeah, that's and that's part of what the evolution group has discussed, which is taking the tooling and proposing metrics for which proposing fully developed metrics for which tooling already exists. Okay. Um, and that's that's what we're starting to do as the as we're two months or slightly less than two months from the deadline for the review period. So in some were that makes sense. And some are leading to a 404 as well. There's one for sure that um, is leading to a 404, I know of, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> one of the challenges with linking to chaos metrics, and this is, as we publish more metrics, we'll have more stable links. But as each of the working groups exactly. have restructured everything, some of the yes. links go bad. So um, I was wondering. That's been a long-term issue for us because we've tried to link them for a long time. And it's just a big maintenance task. But as the as they get published, then these are stable links. So, so I guess the question is, do you do you see the, the text that I put in here? In the document? I oh in the document. In the bottom of the second page. Oops, wait a minute. You see that? I have it highlighted. It yeah. says metrics available yep uh -huh. so i mean i the only thing like i the maintenance of hyperlinking is a pain <laughs> it is <It's> forever <laughs> i mean from a from a software perspective i think it's super useful to people i mean i think the the value add isn't necessarily to chaos the chaos project it's to people that want to consume the software whether it's for more lab or auger or something else, having that link to the definition is a value add for the software. Um, it, it feeds back to chaos, I think, as well. But fundamentally, I think the value is for consumers of whatever the software is. So I, I mean, I'll certainly defer to you because you're. I mean, we have an incentive to try to maintain those, and and we have an incentive to encourage the community to not change the links once they're published, even if the metric changes. If you can keep the links the same. That will allow Grimoire Lab and Augur to embed these with less labor cost. Because it is a fairly sizable labor cost every time. The right, so the text that I was proposing there was to reduce that labor cost to zero. Yeah. You know what I mean, but, you, but, but to your point, then you lose the value of linking directly to the metric. Yeah, as, I mean, that would certainly be a thing we could do, but it's, like I said, a value. So if you, it seems like you believe that the value of linking directly to it is more val it outweighs the cost of maintenance. Presuming, yeah, obviously the keeping consistent links once they're published is a, it's sort of a soft contract I'd like to ask the community for. And I think the more lab likely feels the same way since they would have to maintain the same links. What do you think, Georg? Have you? So, I'm with Sean on that having direct links to the metrics is okay. something valuable, but uh, I see the problem with keeping them up to date. <laughs> I, mean, I totally defer to the two of you, and you could have different approaches too. I don't particularly care. You know, I mean, like Grimoire Lab could take one approach and argue <laughs> the other I mean, Kevin, Kevin's kind of the one that's been doing a lot of the website maintenance. Kevin, do you anticipate that once the metrics published, that it will be reasonably stable in terms of the link? Um, yes. Yeah, those, I, I think the, uh, 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 because we're pulling that from a uh, uh, Get repository. Yeah, and specifically a, a, a release branch. Uh, it, it's pretty stable. So maybe the effort then is to guarantee that you're only linking to released metrics. Because yes. like what you had talked about too was as evolution is releasing metrics, like until they're in the released branch, maybe don't link. I don't know what you thought. That's that's probably a fair statement there. Yeah. What do you the think? The released branch of the website project, I assume. Or which pro which which project? 
It's probably under a website. Kevin? What's, what's the question? The, Wait, where's the, where branch, the release branch of what repository? Kevin? I'm, I'm, I don't understand the question. Well, you said that there's a release branch, and I presume that's in a, a release branch of a GitHub repository? Yes. What is the repository? Yeah, that's, that's correct, right? Uh, let's, well, each, each individual repository has its own, uh, it's, it's branched specifically to the page that it's, we're releasing. It's not a branch, it's a tag. We have a release tag, ah. which tags a specific commit in the master branch. Gotcha. Okay, so there. Let's not. Maybe Kevin and I can, and the Grimaldi Lab group can take this offline and, and see if okay. there's a way to automate the identification of published metrics. Okay. So maybe that's the the happy median medium, yeah. for the happy. Happy ground in between, which is only <coughs> linking to those that are released. However, that's discovered. <coughs> yeah. And any of those that are in development, don't link out to them quite yet. Just because they might move and they might change names and they might, right. you know, Lord knows what. Okay. Okay, great. Um, uh, I see you were taking some notes, Georg. Did you want to make any comments from the Grimoire Lab perspective, Georg? We decided today during the call that we will add the text that you have here okay. to the repo, readme, the website, and then in our in Grimoire Lab itself, we have an about panel. Oh, great! Where we're just going to add this to the description. Great. And then we also have an issue for linking to individual metrics, and I just added the comment that we discussed to only link to released metrics. Okay, great. Okay. Sounds like that's coming <laughs> to some clarity, which is cool. Thank you. Um, the Any other comments on this? The metrics template updates. So I honestly think that all version one metrics are updated. Thank you, Matt, for doing that. <laughs> There are a few like little details, but I think from a template perspective, they're all done. So this morning I spent time kind of going through each of the working groups, cross-referencing what was in the spreadsheet with what is actually in the repository. So I believe those are all updated. Um, so we'll just have to get those out as release too. Um, generally speaking, I think I say this all the time, the template works well. I run into a few little issues sometimes around implementation, like where to put text and the level of detail that needs to be provided. So if you ever think that I'm kind of removing something, which I've been told that I should put something back, which is fine, you know, on the review requests, like I remove something that really probably needs to be there, um, it's totally no problem. Um, and then I'm also going through the main metrics list. So if you recall, we have the metrics that are particular to DNI or risk or value. Um, but then we also have the, the metrics, just the kind of the catch all metrics list that is in the, the um, it's just its own metrics repository. I'm also going through them to the new template. So, you know, a lot of those, for those of you that don't know, a lot of those are just like the names of a metric and the question it might answer, but there's no description, no objective. There's really not much to it, but it's just there as a placeholder because it's something that we've heard before or somebody has brought it forward. And so I'm updating all of those to the new templates. That goes a little bit faster, particularly if nothing has any content in it. <laughs> it's pretty easy to just, just kind of remove those. And even like Sean, some of them have like the old MSR 14 database calls and I just, I'm removing a lot of references mm -hmm. so the precursor uh, to auger yeah <laughs> it was the old you know, uh, gh data or gh yeah gh, GH data. torrent yeah GH torrent. Torrent, the torrent torrent database so it was the yeah. msr 14 torrent data yeah, we don't use that anymore so. no so I'm, I'm going through and basically removing some of those sql statements remember when anna was doing those yeah a while ago so those were those are gone quite a while ago yeah yep 
Um, so anyway, those are all being updated as well. Any questions or comments on that? And every, obviously this point forward, every new metric should be on the new template. That doesn't seem to be a problem at all. Um, okay, so in terms of the metrics release, um, this is the Google document. So I, I did do a little bit of changing on this document just to track a few things. Um, so if you just click on that, that link, the spreadsheet link, um, I added a purple. So I just, green means it's been released. I needed another color. We could almost get rid of red, but um, purple means that it's ready for the next release. So I don't know if this needs to be indicated, but we have those that are released and those that are actually ready for release. So for example, common has a purple one, which is uh, activity dates and time. I know that Georg, you had said Grimoire Lab is working on some visuals for that, but for all intents and purpose, all, for all intents and purposes, that metric is ready, ready to go. Um, so once, once a metric has been released, yeah. Will it always be included in every subsequent subsequent release, regardless of whether it's been edited? Yes. Okay. But this time around, all green metrics should turn purple because all of them have to be updated with a new template. Well, that's a good point. So we can turn them purple. And then I did add, if you see, I added a row, or I'm sorry, a column that says on the new template. I'm just tracking. I was tracking that this morning as well. Each one of them has a column after the name of the metric on the new template. Okay. It was just a way for me to track it. Yeah. So let's not change the color until the working group decides the color is ready for purple. OK. Yeah, because I think in value, they're not only changing. There's one metric that they're not only changing the template, but maybe adding some different content. Yeah, okay. exactly. OK. Um, so there you go. So that's that's all updated. Should be all good. I don't know if anybody has questions on this tracking spreadsheet. Again, I do encourage the working groups to take a look at this and update it accordingly. It's you would have a lot of the insight that maybe sometimes I don't have in terms of metric names or <laughs> what's being brought forward. Um, so I do in each of the working group meetings. So I really do at this point encourage you to bring up this spreadsheet and use it as a way to kind of track the work that you're doing. It helps tremendously at the end of the process for Kevin when we're doing the release onto the website. I have a comment about the timeline. Oh, sure. Yeah, I couldn't quite remember it. So I was kind of. For metrics release? Yeah. We basically said late December, early January, which I interpreted as like maybe the first week of January. Yeah, well, if it's in the, I put the timeline in the notes. You see it there? Yeah, I see it. My, What's your comment? You can change it. My comment is to allow time for creating the WordPress version, the metric release candidate. Right now, the freeze happens on December 31st, and yeah. we cannot start the public comments until we have the WordPress pages. So, oh, so like a, so maybe move this up. I'm going to ask Kevin because he has been the one doing that work. What works for him? As far as time goes, what what uh, for what date is the freeze currently? Sorry, what? What day is the freeze currently? The thirty first, December thirty first. December thirty first, and then we have a thirty day. Three week at the moment. It's in the notes if you scroll down to um, page. My concern is that there's zero days for creating the um, the draft. I guess if you're okay with it, Kevin, creating the pages right before um, or already preparing it before the 31st? Yeah, if, have, if I have a general idea of what's being released, yeah, most of this can be done before the freeze. Uh, and then I can just go live on the freeze. I think that's what we did uh, this last time. 
Okay. Then, then that's all fine. Okay. And I did. I didn't do four weeks for public comment. I just did three. It's probably more than enough. Uh, yeah. If the goal is to go live before Chaos Con, yep. then it probably has to be three weeks, right? Yeah, because then I had, there's 10 days, nine days built in from kind of the end of the public comment to really kind of any last details that need to be done up on the web page. Yep. You know what I mean? So yeah. a week. And during that last week is where all the working groups need to give final approval on any changes. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have to create the new tag in the GitHub repos that then Kevin updates the website. And then we need to change all the URLs on the website. Like archiving the version one and saying this is now so the archive, we are just going to use the PDF that we oh, have. Okay. There will be yep. no live website of an old version because okay. that just creates confusion. Okay. Um, but then we need to update the current website with all the metrics to the new version. Gotcha. Uh, delete the release candidate versions again, and then also produce the new PDF. Okay. In and of itself takes a day right now. Okay, so nine days should be plenty. Yeah. Sounds like it. Okay. Okay. Um, great. So that's, I'm nearing the end of my items. Um, and if I recall last, I will just say this too, with version one, we were a little flexible on some of the dates. Mm -hmm. I think we had a little bit of latitude, like you can going give yourself more time though ahead of. I you. think, yeah, I think we're less flexible this time around, uh, because of because of the Boston deadline. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would say, uh, as far as working groups making changes to their to their releases, mm -hmm. it would be, uh, we gave them a lot of time on this last release. It might be. Uh, it might be a good idea to really push them to uh, modify the uh, the release as the uh, comments come in during the comment period. Mm -hmm. so. Makes sense. And, and maybe push people to comment that first week that it's open, so we can get most of the comments in. Yeah, I'll. I mean, I'll make sure that I attend all of the working groups, and Georg, you can too, to really help encourage the working groups to to ob observe their own, <laughs> to observe others. I mean, that's, I mean, this is, these are going to be the groups that, that help. So, um, all right. Are there any working group updates from common DNI evolution risk or value that you want to report? Uh, evolution, uh, I can report that there's a group of metrics that we're moving towards that we have a stabilized template that's being used um, for risk. I can report that we have a small set of metrics that are also reflected in the spreadsheet that are being developed and will be used. Um, those are the two that I have updates for. Okay. Um, did, Sean, while, while you're on, did you have any risk updates? I. Uh, I maybe swallowed that with the evolution update, but the evolution group, if the evolution working group is, has got a small set of metrics. Oh, that was that one. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And we've also, I mean, it's sort of related to Augur. There's a lot of tooling that we've built to Augur right now as well. Okay. Gotcha. Thanks. Um, Georg, I see you're putting the ASF survey. Yeah. And then uh, we worked on event metric. The attendee demographics. Um, those are, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, so there's an ASF survey that's going out with respect to getting a um, better idea about diversity in their projects. Correct me if I'm 
getting this a little bit wrong, Georg. Um, but they've been working with some folks kind of across a variety of different places to which chaos has some input in this. And so the survey is being released and I, um, I think that's about it. Did I get that about right? Yep. We just helped them a little bit with ideas for the survey. Okay. Um, common, I, I can tell you the common template or template, the common um, repository structure has been updated around who, what, when, where kind of thing. So that's that's complete. So we had to re rename some of the focus areas. And at the moment, there's a single metric around dates and times that is being brought forward in common. And it's, like I said, maybe earlier, it's largely done. Um, value, I don't know if Andy's on. Andy is not on at the Andy moment. Andy was on earlier. Yeah, I had him on. Um, I wasn't at the last value call. So it's okay if we have no update. I think this, this was the off. It was the off week, so we okay. didn't we didn't yeah, meet last we week. We shared the update last week. Um, that's like a one value metric we is uh, complete and one is under discussion. Okay. So it's like uh, job opportunities is almost done, and uh, this ecosystem social currency metric is under discussion. Okay. So a couple metrics moving forward. Yes. Okay. I want to add to the risk working group is that um, we also talked about an open source metric, which was inspired by a conversation I had with the OSI folks at All Things Open, who said it would be nice to have a metric that says the licenses in this project are OSI approved. Are open official open source licenses. Okay. And so the idea is to have a code coverage, not code coverage, license coverage with a filter for OSI approved. And Augur has that implemented as of this point. I can show you a demo if you'd like to see it. Or sure. I'd love to see it. And then uh, mm -hmm. if you can reply to the email I sent off the list, with uh, Patrick and Nick from OSI. Yeah. We would love to know about this. So now basically we have, we've got all the licenses in the project listed as well as the license coverage, lots of license information, but now we have the percent of the licenses that are OSI approved. On our projects, this is Zephyr. There are three files that have non-OSI approved licenses in Zephyr. And I'm sure when Kate sees that, it will be fixed. <laughs> is that what you're, is that what they're talking about? Eric? So, um, you know, this is the conversation we need to have with them, but I think so. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. Nice, Sean. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank for... you, Matt. It's not all, it's not all us. It's the whole Augur team. I didn't do anything for them virtually. Cool with that. <laughs> all right. Um, I saw there were some software updates from Grimoire Lab. Um, there's a new release, some new panels, it looks like, around contributor growth, engagement by contributors. Oh, great, the org organizational diversity. What's by domain, organizational diversity by domain? What is that? What is domain? Um, uh, so th this is the title of the, of the presentation and domain, I guess, is the uh, domain we get from the email of the people contributing to the uh, to the project. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Okay. Great. Thank you for putting that in there, Valerio. Um, Augur, Sean, do you have any updates for uh, The bigger update is that to... the risk metrics continue to evolve. There were also a number of installation issues that emerged from discussions in the Augur um, call that we have once a week on, on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Mm -hmm. And the installation is pretty smooth now. Um, and right down to loading up your own repos and collecting data. So 
Um, I'm excited about that. I think the whole team's really excited about that. It's a lot of progress on making it easy to use since the OSS Summit North America. And we also, there were, a, <laughs> there were a few things that were identified in the, in the plan that we fixed, so all the graph issues that we identified are fixed as well. So those are, those are in the latest release that we made. Okay. Um, I will say just kind of like both Grimoire Lab and Augur, the, the push since um, maybe August on install has been great. <laughs> so I, I know that both, both groups have been really pushing on trying to improve how the installation process works. Um, so anyway, that's my comment. I just, it's really great to see that. And I think it's personally made things a lot easier <laughs> for, for getting these tools in front of people. Yeah. Um, what are you writing, Gary? Yeah, so today during the Grimola call, we uh, decided to next week um, look at a possible collaboration between Grimoire Lab and Augur. The shared problem that both face is knowing what data sources to look at and what projects to analyze. And there are different approaches right now, but we want to see if we can standardize this into one that is called the projects JSON right now where we specify, hey, these are the GitHub repos, these are the projects, this is how they logically fit together. And then from there, Augur and Grimoire Lab could ingest the same project definitions. And then maybe we can collaborate on building out a graphical user interface for how to define this project's JSON. So it's a, I think it, if I understand it, it's a cool idea. So is the idea that um, the person, say the community manager, would populate this projects.json file, yeah. and then it could be consumed by the tools? Yeah, I mean, I think, I, and I think the key value is that if we have a standard JSON configuration, that, that means people can load it into either Augur or Remore Lab. I, I talked about this in the call. I think it is useful to have just a straight up CSV that people can load in the either tool as well, simply because there's people who are not going to be adept at generating JSON files. Maybe there's some way that we can provide them a utility that would take a CSV and build the JSON structure so that that could be the standard input. I mean, that would be pretty straightforward. So step one is there's no reason for these tools to have different import formats. Or step one is that. And then step two is making sure that it remains easy for the community manager that's not a JSON aficionado. Okay. that's. Super cool. So is, is part of this about kind of defining what those tags would be? I think Grimoire Lab has basically done that. And I think it's okay. about uh, logger understanding it. I think there's a way that they're generating it from their stack that that's probably the nature of the discussion is to understand that process. If I followed correctly, Georg, you can tell me if I didn't. Yeah, one is Augur already uses it. and. <coughs> So we want to have the conversation to see if it's feature complete. Maybe Augur has additional ideas, but otherwise it's about Augur learning the language of projects, Jason. And then the second part is Beast Cherry, which is a graphical user interface for building the projects, Jason. So you don't have to actually write in a text editor, Jason. That's a really cool idea. So thanks for bringing that forward. I mean, that would be a way to, to, to actually potentially standardize, not just for Grimoire Lab or Augur, the way that that project data is, is consumed. Yeah, no, right, exactly. It could be a much broader consumption if you've got two tools using it, pretty much any tool that you've driven uses it. Yep, great idea. Cool, thanks for, thanks for doing that. Um, all right, any other? Things from people at the end of end of the list. Um, all right. If not, I s really do appreciate everybody's thoughts today, and um, we'll see you next week, later this week, maybe later today. Do we have no. I don't think we have any more meetings today. No more meetings today. <laughs> uh, so until next time, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. See you later. Bye.